Hey guys, this is Ryan the Geeky Veep. Today I'm going to show you how to create a weighted average. And we're going to do that using Power Pivot. And we're going to use DAX. We're going to use the sum x function and the all except function. So let me show you what we've got here. We've got a table. Uh, I've got different kinds of loans, uh, dates, balances, uh, and the rate. Now, let's say your CEO comes up to you and says, can you tell me what my average um, rate is on all my loans that we have to pay off? So if we did that and just took a simple average, your average rate is about 4.8%, right? Well, you would be way off if you told your CEO, oh yeah, we pay on average 4.85% on all of our loans. What he's really asking for is give him that weighted average rate so he can understand what kind of expense he's gonna incur the next year for his debt. So how do we do that? All right, so let's go ahead and quickly add this table to the data model. And now that we have it there, we're gonna create a couple of different calculated fields. The first one we're gonna create is the base. So in this case, the weight is going to be based on the loan balance. So that's our base. So no matter how we create or manipulate our, our pivot table later, we want to make sure that we always have the total of all of these balances as the base. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to go ahead and call this all balances. We'll come down and the base is going to be um, calculate. We want the sum, you've already seen this function before, of the loans. Some of the loan balances, we close the parentheses. And at this point, now we're starting the filter. And how do we want to filter? Well, actually we're gonna like unfilter it. That's what an all except does. So give me, no matter what I put on here, except what? Well, what do we are we not going to use when we uh, manipulate our pivot table? We're not going to use the loans themselves. So first we type in the loan table. As you can see down here, it tells you what, you're, what you need to type in. The first thing is a table name, then the column name. So again, it's a loan table and loan balance. Let me close parentheses once, close it again. Now we'll check the currency, or change the currency. Check the formula. Got a green check mark. We're good there. I'll hit OK. All right, so let's quickly add our pivot table based on this power pivot, or the, the data model. All right, so let me real quickly show you what we have here. We've created our pivot table. And notice, no matter what information we have over here, we always have a base. It's always going to show the entire balance of all loans. So I can take date out, and we're left with the loan types. But again, it still leaves us with 15 million. I could put the date back in, remove the type. Again, 15 million. So that's key. So whenever you do a weighted average, you always need to have that base the same no matter what you do. That's the first function. And now we're going to create a, another function, which is using sum x and this all balances formula. So go back to power pivot, calculate fields. And we're going to call it the weighted, weighted rate. All right. So we're going to start with the sum x, sum. We can arrow down to the x. All right. What do we want? We want the table of loans. It's the only table we actually have in our data model. And let me go back real quick. You notice that we know that's a table because it has a T next to it. We know this is a measure because it has an M. And then these are all available, all the available fields. So we'll tab over. We've got the table right. And the expression is going to be the what? It's going to be the rate times the balance of that loan. So let's start typing. It's the loan rate times that loan, not the all balances, but the specific balance for that, that row. Okay, it's a specific balance for that row. And this is 
how SUMX works. It's called an iterator. It functions based on row specific information. Okay. And that's why you need the sum x. If you try doing this, try it sometime. Use the sum function, it will not work. Sum x is what works. So now doing that, it'll take each row, multiply the rate times the balance. Then what do we need to do? We need to divide by the all balances function. Okay. Let's see, we want to do a rate. And we're going to see, hey, look at that. Got a green light. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a table. And then what's the expression? The expression is the rate times the balance. Okay. And then you're dividing it by all balances. We hit OK. And there we go. So now if your CEO asks you that question, you wouldn't say 4.85%. You'd say 20.89%. Let's look at that. What happens when we get the cost of that for one year, for example, is going to be 3.1 million versus 731,000. So you would be understating the amount of expense to your CEO by almost two and a half million dollars. That's probably not a good thing to tell him. Um, but anyways, now you know how to create that weighted average. And the great thing is we can switch things up over here quite a bit. So if we take out, we're going to take out all balances and some of loans. So you can see the weighted average rate for each individual month. Okay. You can take date out and put the type back in. Okay. And we could see, really, if we wanted to do this right, we go back into Manage the Calculated Fields, Edit, and we're going to give it a five decimal places. OK. And there you go. So no matter how you rearrange your, your, your pivot table, you will always get your weighted average rate over here. OK, hopefully you found that useful. I'll see you the next time. Take care.